Thank you very much. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming. I really appreciate it. I'm not sure what to say and how we'll do up here, but we'll, we'll check it out. Um, as David pointed out, I was in a very bad motorcycle accident in September. And um, just getting back into things now and starting to shoot again, um, I'll be with a lot of pain and so forth. Um, but it's important to me. It's, I've been shooting most of my life in one way or another. And um, it's also what I do for a career. It's how I make money. So it's very important to, for me to shoot. This is me and my motorcycle, my beloved old BMW that's no longer with us. Um, this was at the uh, Distinguished Gentleman's Ride in May. Um, for those that are curious, it's a BMW R100 Cafe Racer. And it's great. I love the motorcycle. It's also a great subject. Whenever I've, I've, I've had a motorcycle I love, I excuse me, like to take pictures of it. Um, this is in Washington Square Park. It's great for getting into in the city and out of the city and quickly. Um, and it's great for making new friends all over the place. Almost wherever I would park, I would uh, make new friends in the city. And Piermont, New York, is uh, right near me, um, just about 15 minutes away. And I sort of love to ride up there, clear my mind um, for my mental um, ability, so to say. Um, love to go to Balthazar. Always a parking spot for the motorcycle in front. Um, this is the Palisades Parkway, excuse me, where I l would like to ride all the time because going east into New York is, is one thing, going south to Hoboken is another, going west on 80 or whatever is, uh, there's a lot of crazy drivers around, but the Palisades Parkway, a lot of bicyclists, a lot of motorcyclists, it's a great place. Uh, it's an easy ride for the most part. With that said, however, in March, thank you, in, uh, in March, I was actually rear-ended at exit two, destroying another motorcycle. Fortunately, due to my martial arts background, I was, I was thrown and I was able to roll out of it. It doesn't mean I wasn't injured, it just means I, I, it wasn't deadly, thank God. Um, but in September, in this location, unfortunately, a driver struck me on the side, and it pushed me off into the woods just before this sign here, um, the speed sign. And unfortunately, um, I was found next to the sign. This is the unfortunate scene. Uh, you can see the motorcycle on the left, the tree that I hit on the right. I believe, I don't remember a thing. I was knocked out, fortunately, unfortunately. And I think I tried to steer to the right, but some damage on the bike was to the left, so it, it somehow did acrobatics to the left. and threw me behind those people, which is another 20, 30 feet away. My fuel tank, another 20, 30 feet past that. Um, this is me as they found me. As, this is footage from the first responder's body cam, which I requested. Um, I always look at this and I, I feel kind of lonely. Like, I, I've, I've been in a helper, a first responder in, in accidents. And I'm always there with the person, but it's, I can't really hold it against these people. Not to mention that um, some wonderful people, um, paramedics stopped to save my life um, and to help stabilize me so I could be transported. And they were there, I think, within minutes, just by chance driving by. And this, you can see how far I was thrown from the motorcycle or from the tree, whichever. And, um, and I think my head hit this barrier on the left, that, uh, that sharp corner. Luckily, I was wearing a helmet, but um, nonetheless, I, I had a, a brain bleed among many other injuries. Um, my, uh, my spine was um, fractured in four places, uh, fractured nine ribs. My spleen was burst, um, so I was bleeding internally, so they had to take that out. And I have a scar from my um, sternum to my groin because I think they checked everything out, if that makes sense. Um, this is a helicopter that came, and they had to evacuate the park so that it could park. So, um, and one of my friends was actually in the park at the time with an EMT friend of his. Um, I was flown to Hackensack University Hospital, which was great. It's a great place to wake up. They were absolutely wonderful there. I'm so thankful to them. 
they say that I'm the first person that's ever come back to thank them. And I've been back there twice, and I plan on going back again because they're just wonderful people. Thank God. Um, this is my brain. This is, the, the, I think, the CAT scan of the, showing the brain bleed, if, any, if anybody knows how to read that. We're all image, imaging professionals here. Um, so as I said, I had a couple of brain hemorrhages. I had my spleen removed, fractured spine, fractured vertebrae, multiple disc herniations and, and disc tears, fractured nine ribs. And I also have, in addition to brain issues, I have some eye muscle issues. So as a photographer, and, and the torn shoulders, it's very difficult. I have a difficulty now focusing in front of me, close to far away, and back and forth. Um, but I, I like to go out and shoot in the street. And hopefully that's helping. Um, so I can still do professional work for the most part, but sometimes my personal work, I suffer a little bit. It's, it's, I'm not, I don't have the same wherewithal as I did previously, unfortunately. Before this, I was an avid martial artist. I've been practicing um, traditional Japanese art for years, mainly Aikido, but also swordsmanship, et cetera, et cetera. And I hope to practice again, but it's, uh, I, I don't know if I can get pushed around at this point in, in my, the way my body is. I'm scared if somebody just bumps into me on the street or in the hallway here, frankly. So about my photography, um, some people know it and some people know my work, thank God. Um, I started photographing at an early age. My grandfather was a collector and he used to give me cameras and lenses, mainly Zeiss or Zeiss design lenses, um, even though, ironically, he was a Leica collector. I don't think I ever saw a Leica of his for some reason. This is uh, a four by five I took in college. I went to the Museum, School of the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, and um, that's when I started to use a four by five, a, a CNR, uh, and lenses that my grandfather gave me. And I think it was here that I started to develop a style of close-up portraiture Something I, I found that I, that I love. I love people's faces. I love people. I love um, the details. To me, they're like rich landscapes, except that when people have gesture or emotional value, all the more. There was um, a period where I was using a ring light a lot. This is Bar Raffaele and Adi Ezra. She was dating Leonardo DiCaprio. And when she stopped, and, and in this case got married, or engaged to this gentleman, Adi Ezra, it was news, I think, because mainly um, she was no longer dating Leonardo DiCaprio and he was on the market. So, and she's also a famous supermodel in her own right, but nonetheless, this, this shot went around the world in many great publications. This um, may not look like much, but it's one of my, my favorite photos because this was a, a prior CEO of William Morris Endeavor, and I had like five minutes with him, and he was not an easy guy to, to work with. And I would say in my work, if there's one thing I want to do with people is establish a connection, and at least have a few seconds of something real. If somebody's just standing straight and not giving me any, any value, not being a person, frankly, for what a person is worth, it, it doesn't, it's not meaningful. So I have to have something, in this case, just, it's a small gesture, but it's something. And also the lighting I worked on for a while before he showed up. And I think I had an equipment failure in that case, but uh, redundancy, redundancy. Um, so I was able to make it work within those five minutes, thank God. Maybe some of you recognize uh, this gentleman, um, a big guy, as they say. Um, I'm also fascinated not with facial features and the landscape of all these details and features, but people's eyes. I'm very drawn to, to people's eyes and wanting to show that in some way without overdoing it. Sometimes the ring light um, is overdoing it. So, um, but in this case it wasn't, obviously. It wasn't a ring light, excuse me. This was a hat shoot for a company with a model I used to love to work with. It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, maybe some of you recognize her. Uh, famous Israeli actress um, Gal Gadot and um, the truth is between you and me she, she, uh, she wouldn't look at me straight on and I was like but the shot is straight she's like I don't I'm like okay so I shot it anyway of course obviously but and I'm not sure I regret it 
but it was just funny. And she, ultimately, she was great. And she had a presence when she walked in a room, like if just um, you would you'd notice her. Even though she was among other great people, she had a certain presence. Philip Winchester, he was on Law and Order. He had his own show, Chicago Justice, was part of the Chicago series. Uh, also, again, a great guy. But again, I just want some connection. No matter how, how little it is, just show me some real raw emotion. Asaf Granit, uh, a famous Israeli chef here in New York, also a great guy, great personality, and a great face, great, rich, feature-rich landscape of a face. And who, what kind of father would I be if I didn't show my kids? Um, so we go in New York all the time, and I can't help but photograph them. I thought my oldest daughter has told me now that she's a little bit traumatized, but I, I'm, I'm confident I didn't overshoot her in her youth, but nonetheless, thank God I have great pictures of them. Um, they have a condition um, known as HHT, which is um, a capillary vein disorder where people get hemorrhage at any time. This is um, a sh from a shoot I did for a foundation, the Cure HHT Foundation. And um, the doctors involved that were absolutely great lifesavers, to say the least. Exemplary of uh, some good emotion. Maybe some recognize this, uh, this famous attorney. This was at another event. Just some of these great eyes. This was um, with a, a wide open barn door at a, at a wedding and just a, a fantastic face. My youngest, um, what to say? This is uh, an award-winning, Grammy award-winning uh, musician, C. Lansbaum, a great guy. I love this shot. He's, I think he still uses this shot. You know, it's a few years old. Michael Mullen, who unfortunately couldn't be here today, but um, great guy. Patrick Wilson, maybe some of you recognize him um, from the Marvel movies, I think, and so forth. And as I said, I'm, I'm drawn to eyes and also to understand the complexity and why we're all enthralled with eyes or, or what effect they have. There's a, um, an understood, I want to say secret, but it's not, maybe it's not really a secret, but in Disney movies, they frequently don't have catch lights, which as a photographer may be something to consider, that that's how they show evil. It's vacuous because they don't show a reflection. It's almost like a reflection in a mirror, I guess, concept with, it, with, with um, Dracula or, or something. So I, I played with it at times just to see what it was like. I don't think she looks evil, per se, um, but it's interesting with the, with the widened pupils. So my other work, when I, was, when I was shooting with a ring light, I had a special softbox for it. And the, the whole trick was, First of all, I, I do portraiture a lot with a 50 millimeter lens or so. And I like that. And people, some people have told me, and I've heard people say and write, if you're going to shoot portraits, only do it with an 85 or greater. Shoot with what you, what you want. Uh, a 25 millimeter, a 35 millimeter, a 50 millimeter, whatever, it's fine. But a 50 or 55 in actuality was the only focal length that would work with the ring light that I had if I wanted the pupil to line up with the whole. So there's no, so the catch light, the reflection is on the, um, the iris, uh, the cornea, um, iris. As I said, <laughs> this, uh, this wonderful subject's husband is here in the audience, um, and it, just a great picture. Great eyes, great personality, great work. Uh, another um, gentleman, uh, again, I love these close-up features. I heard somebody was saying today, like, uh, shooting macro, shooting their, their, their children. Uh, this is that kind of sense. I just love the details and love rich features. Another gentleman from years ago, and this is with the ring light also, but you can see that there's a slight spillover in the, in, over the pupil. Another photographer. 
I donate my work at times to organizations that I find worthy. This is for um, an organization that helps victims of terror. And um, I've been in a few uh, terror incidents myself, bombings. Uh, unfortunately, um, not hurt, thank God, but uh, a cause that's close to me. Same thing, that she's, she was injured in the, um, I can't think of the name of the bombing, but in, outside London. Um, there's a famous singer there. There's a gentleman who has a book and he was hurt in a bombing at Mike's Place in Tel Aviv. And, whoops. And f for those that want to know, tech equipment, these um, were shot on, the, on a Fuji 100S, I believe, with the Zeiss Otis 55, my favorite lens for portraiture, frankly. And I like to experiment, I like to play. I, as, as I said before, I like to play in the street all the time. And as, as David brought up, Washington Square Park is the main place that I like to shoot people in other areas in the streets of New York. What a playground for a photographer. But this is um, with a shooting over a, uh, I want to say a six by six, it may not be. It's, a, it's called a Sawyer's, the camera, Sawyer's 4. Um, but I, I set up, I think, my Sony at the time to be mounted to it so it would shoot on top. It would shoot the little screen, um, which I found really nice. It had a, a great rendering to it and softened uh, the harshness of it, so to say, the harsh lighting. And um, as I alluded to, I love to do street portraiture. As I had said that my, my grandfather would gift me cameras when I was younger. Started with a Mickey Mouse camera. I think the lens was in the, in the nose. And I think maybe I was six, seven. Um, I wish I had some of those shots left. I think it was a 110 cassette, if anybody remembers those. I age myself here. Um, but in college, or excuse me, I used to shoot in high school also, and shoot a lot of cars. But I found myself drawn to people. I'm compelled to shoot people. I can't stop but see people walking down the street and I'm just in awe at people's faces as they walk by, and more so, people's eyes. And I think I get a little bit awkward with it. I, I, I get the feeling that a lot of photographers fall into the category of having ADD or neurodiverse or whatever, but I'm just so enamored with faces at times that I just get caught up in, in staring and looking at somebody. I can't help it. Someone else uh, I came across in the city, um, just stunning face say the least. I think this was shot on a Canon 20D with a Zeiss 51.4 at the time. A, a, main, a workhorse mainstay a camera I've had for years and years. This is um, Johnny, I can't remember his last name, anybody knows? He's on FBI, great guy. Mayan Zilberman, um, she was a famous uh, candy person. She was doing candy on the level of Vogue, so to say. Like Vogue would feature articles on her as well as many others. And also, again, a great, just a great face, simply put. I can't help but shoot dogs in the city also, especially when they're, when they're cute like this. This is shot, again, with uh, the Fuji 100S, I believe, and uh, a Contax Zeiss 50 1.4, a lens that I've had since I bought it new with my Contax RTS 3 in about Maybe it was 90, 91. And, I, and by the way, that lens was on the shelf for years. As I bought new ones and, and the Zeiss Otis, what am I going to use an old 51.4 planar? But for some reason, on the Fuji 100S, it's magic. And 50R, medium format Fuji. It's just, it comes into its own. And I've seen that with a lot of lenses. They just have a different look on, the, on that camera. Not to mention, I like to use other lenses on the camera as well. And maybe Fuji will kill me here, because uh, I only have, really have one Fuji lens I use just as a workhorse in, in commercial work. But for going around the street, I like to use Voigtlander or Zeiss, um, the contacts lens. In this case, this is the Zeiss ZM 51.5, a stellar lens, except that I, I wish I could get maybe one or two inches closer when I'm doing uh, street portraits. There's also another fellow photographer I'm running to at times in the city. And uh, as I said, I'm just, I, I am, I'm compelled to go out and shoot on my own 
and, and capture faces. And I get disappointed when people won't let me, which is very rare, but um, it's very rewarding when I get shots like this where everything just works, the eyes, the freckles, the hair, the wind, everything, um, just in that, in that split second. So um, regarding the accident um, and getting back on the horse, so to say, the, the first thing is really photography. Maybe I'll get back on a motorcycle one day, maybe, uh, if my body can handle it and my brain, my wherewithal, when I'm not there yet, um, any of those. But um, it's, it's good PT, it's good occupational therapy, physical therapy for me to be out doing what I love to do and doing what I make money at. Um, it's good for me to socialize. Um, again, the, the brain injury I had has made things a little bit difficult, especially because some of it is frontal lobe damage, which is the same as, uh, as ADD. So I feel like I have ADD times 10 or times 100, whatever. And not to mention, in the hospital initially, I, I couldn't walk. I couldn't talk. I was not just unconscious for the first day, but even for days afterward, I couldn't. And two weeks later, even, I, I, just, I remember, um, OK, I, I can walk. Just You don't have to hold me every time. I just need to go to the bathroom. And sure enough, I, I slipped when I came to the bathroom. And then everybody knew. Even when I went to rehab, everybody knew I, I fell in the hospital. They had a special warning for me to listen to them. Um, so going out in the world and not just sitting at home and recouping um, is important to strengthen my back, my social skills, my verbal skills, because um, talking was also an issue for a while. Um, I'm incredibly thankful to be here today, to be able to stand, um, to walk and talk, present, and so on. Just more examples of me being compelled to shoot perfect strangers. And hopefully one day I'll, I'll put these together in, in a book. Uh, maybe I'll stop and shoot you one day, um, and so on. A new friend in Washington Square Park. I, I've done a whole series there for years of just photographing perfect strangers there in, in the park. And it's a great place. It's a great place, for, again, for the PT and OT to socialize, to hang out, to chill, um, without the frenetic pace of the rest of New York. Another photographer. This is in Soho. Washington Square Park. This, <laughs> this was a funny shot. I wish I had reversed him. On the, on the flip side of him was a fire, a raging fire. And there's this guy watching it. And I have a great shot of him from behind. I, I should have included it here, I realize now. But I just asked him to turn around, and I just shot him. But and it's a compelling picture, and I love it. I just wish I had the story in the shot itself. Um, another favorite shot, Perfect Stranger at Finelli's in Soho. Same Finelli's in Soho. And at times, I also like to test out lenses and just see what they can do. First of all, in, in my arsenal, when I got the Fuji GFX system, medium format, it has a larger sensor. So what lenses? do I have that can fit it with an adapter and fill the frame or fill enough of it, 80, 90%. Um, and so this was a test, I think, with the Zeiss ZM35 1.4, an amazing lens I put aside um, in favor of a couple of other lenses for the Fuji. But it's, when I use this lens, it's absolutely stunning. I wouldn't buy it for the Fuji GFX, but if you have one, it's just stunning. This is a Balthazar, another perfect stranger. Does anybody know this guy? Uh, he's, he's a great guy. He does uh, great videos on YouTube. And he walks around with photographers. And um, Paul Lee B, great guy. Run into him all the time. Someone else in Washington Square Park, I think he might be a photographer also. Another photographer in Soho. And. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how long I should go on, but just, I, I'm, I'm not marketing to you guys, but just to show my work, if, if anybody wants to see, this is um, love and happiness. And the reason I show this is because this picture is from college, a million years ago. I think it was 1988. And a good friend of mine, she's actually a great set designer here in the city, and she does uh, big movies and shows. But. In, in college, I think that the general idea in, in art school, and the art school ego was, I'll never shoot weddings or bar mitzvahs, bar mitzvahs, or family shots, couples. 
Um, it's, it seems beneath such artistic um, intent. But then you look at the painters, and the painters are also painting people and painting what we consider a mundane situation, but trying to make it rich. So ultimately, years later, I found that I can do this, and I have value there because not just that I have value, I, I find it rich and meaningful because in photographing the pe people in the street, there's, a, there's, a, there's another high of the, meeting somebody and, and getting that. With these kinds of shots, it's like the meat of it is the emotional value, that what they're sharing emotionally, what I'm able to capture is a unique gift. And to be able to do that and get paid to do it, when it is, is amazing. This one I didn't get paid to do. These are some people I came across um, and shot al alongside another photographer with, with a Leica, and our, our shots were fascinatingly different. His certainly had value. Mine do, I think, more because of the, the great depth of field, pun uh, not intended, um, but also the emotional value of them just sharing that moment. And I think it's enriched by that shallow depth of field, if you will. If you had all the other information back, your eyes might be drawn to the sign or the people, somebody else's um, interaction between people and so on. I love backlit scenes. And this is a wedding I did out in California. And again, just that emotional, emotional value there it was just so rich. And uh, this is showing my, uh, my other wedding work here. Any questions, by the way, from anybody? Well, where are you? Say again? Free Versus, 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 versus is tough. Versus is, is um, quite a qualifier on that. Um, like, look, I, I, have, I have a brain injury, so honestly, showing up to shoot and just shooting has value for me. Um, so when I can do that in this kind of state, it's, oops, so I cut it out, um, then, sometimes in managing it. So uh, I do both, frankly. To David, what, what's, what's next for you now that you're on this amazing road to recovery? One more time. For David, I, just getting back up. That's amazing. I, you know. you think? So what, what's next? What, what are... I mean, honestly, I'm just getting, getting back into shooting now. Um, and it hurts. It's painful. Um, I don't know. OK. But so, up here. Uh, Let's see. I don't know if it's me or. But um, so what's next? Uh, it's just whatever jobs I can get. Um, I've got bills to pay, and um, and just hopefully returning to to normal as much as possible, whatever whatever that means. At the same time, I feel like I have a new lease on life, so to say. I know it sounds cliche. But I'm open to what comes. And like I said, I'm just getting back out there now and able to be sort of normal. And so we'll see what the world brings to me, so to say. We've got time for two questions from the audience. We've got Emmanuel here with the microphone. Hi. Um, well, first of all, uh, you know, congratulations on your recovery. Thank you so much. Yeah. and. Um, I was really struck with your street work. I, it has such like a relaxed vibe to it. So I was wondering if you could speak a little bit to your process with, you know, approaching people and getting them to kind of let the guard down a bit so that you can catch those like relaxed, like kind of vulnerable moments that you're capturing on the street. It's a good question. Um, it's funny because innately I'm a little bit of a shy person. And I've had to work at being social. And I've had to do it again in this process, so to say. Um, honestly, sometimes I just feel like I'm in my own self. My body gets all achy, and my brain gets funky, and when my eyes are wonky at times. Um, but nonetheless, it's, it's a struggle. So if you, if, if you struggle, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's just, I, I, I find just being social and just talking to people is great. 
And then typically, I, I don't want somebody to just stand there. So if I get somebody's permission to photograph them, but they're just standing there, I'll ask them to maybe lean up against this post, lean against something. I'll talk to them for a second. Um, I'll chill with them. I'll ask them where they're from, which is something I like to do. I find it very uh, disengaging. I won't say disengaging. It's not really true, though. Um, disarming, excuse me. Um, and engaging with them, as opposed to you're just somebody I need to shoot right now, or whatever. Just if it feels cheap to them, I don't think, or you can't connect to them, you're not going to get anything, in my opinion. Sure. We have another question here. A quick question. Uh, you mentioned <clears throat> you had some frontal lobe damage. Yes. I've been doing a lot of reading about creativity and the involvement of the frontal lobe. Yeah. It's, like you said, it's the same thing involved in ADD. Do you think your creativity has changed any because of that it's, damage? It's a fascinating question. I have not thought about it. And I don't think so. And I've done some shooting since. And I struggle with shoulder issues, eye issues, whatever. But I don't think the creativity is lost. I mean, I, I think it's ingrained in my system. Like I said, I've been shooting from an early age and then in college and all the years since in some manner. So I think that's sort of carved out in me. And, and maybe it's the left side of my brain, not that it matters, but meaning it's more methodical at this point. Like I know what works so with lighting, for example. I, I just know how to light rather than I'm lost in it, if that makes sense. All right. Thank Anyone, you. I guess a couple more questions I guess we have time for. Okay, I'm gonna end this thing. David, thank you so much for not dying and still being with us. <laughs> <laughs> that's, thank you, thank that's you. That's a big deal. Um, I, yeah, and also, you're really a wonderful photographer. You really you have great eyes, and you really sense it all up. So, uh, best of luck to what comes next. And it was it was great having you here on the stage. Thank you. So Thank much. you very much. Thank you for your support, everybody.